let's move on. Let's get to the news, shall we? Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. South American. All the ships and crippers at sea. Let's go to press. Game news. First up in game news, uh, something I almost don't want to mention. There is a game called Western Empires. <sighs> okay. Finally. There is a game <laughs> called Western Empires. 2019. Mm, it's about it had, time. Yeah. It, 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 eventually, somebody had to pick that as a theme and make a game about it. Yeah. Uh, no, Western Empires came out in 2019. In reality, it's still not really out in the in, in the U.S. yet. It's a, a, a Europeans uh, made it. Um, it is the modern interpretation of Civilization. So. Way back when, there was a game called Civilization by Francis Tresham, same guy who designed, who created the 18xx series of games. Uh, Francis Tresham is an absolute genius. Then, a couple years after that, a, a sequel to it uh, was made called Advanced Civilization. Not a sequel, but, you know, sort of an improvement of things. Uh, one of the designers of Advanced Civilization was Jennifer, our Jennifer. This is the game that all of the older time gamers, all of the pioneer gamers, uh, look back to as the great gaming experience of their youth, of their earlier days. It was as good as it could get, and it would take 12, 16 hours. You would spend, uh, you know, you'd, you'd get up in the morning, you'd play until late night. It was astonishing. And every civilization game, and I mean every civilization game, Sid Meier's Civilization, all the way down to Through the Ages, all of them are different designers attempting to reinvent that mousetrap and make it for the modern day audience, trying to capture the elusive great civilization game. And these guys, Western Empire, what they did was uh, years after Advanced Civilization, disappeared and it was never to be seen again. I have a copy here, but we, you know, we don't, um, you know, they haven't made copies of that. Somebody came up with mega civilization around uh, 2015. I want to say 2015 uh, mega civilization was a civilization game that played up to 19 players. It used the Eastern and Western maps of civilization because civilization had a Eastern map that you could also buy and add into the thing. And it was just, uh, it was massive. It was enormous. Uh, small printing didn't, uh, didn't last very long. And so Western Empires just came out. There will be an Eastern Empires as well that you can combine to recreate Mega Civilization. But this game is very, very close to and very, very faithful to Civilization. It has an AST. That's an Archaeological Succession Track. Um, it, it is... It is basically all of the mechanisms of civilization and advanced civilization in particular uh, put together with only fairly minimal tweaking when it comes right down to it. And uh, it takes forever. If you want to see a hilarious review of this, Shut Up and Sit Down just did their review of uh, of Western Empires. You must check it out. Uh, Quinn's... Uh, Quinn's had <laughs> had had issues with the length. Let's just say that, and kind of gets into it. Yeah, but we're we're hardcore gamers, right? We should be able to handle this, right? I thought you know you know what uh, I have to say. Shut up and sit down. Has they have really actually specifically Quinn's has really come a long way. I think as a reviewer, I think he's always mm -hmm. been very spot on and very articulate about his his um, thoughts on games. But over the years, I think his content has become sharper and more like, you know, like he sort of is able to really now convey a lot of things. And I watched that yesterday and um, I really liked how he expressed his views on that game. And um, I think it's definitely worth watching for people. Yeah. If you're interested in that sort yeah. of game. I, I, having played a lot of Civilization, I totally get what he's saying. And at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but... It's civilization. That's what you got. So it's like everything he's saying is from a modern board gamer's perspective. Like you could get totally wiped out and still have to wait 10 hours for the game to be over. It is unfair in the way the calamities can be can can totally miss people and totally hit other people. And it's this and that. And, and, and the, the way the board is designed is this and the other thing. I'm like, 
Yes. See, that's yes. a mean game. That's a mean <laughs> game right there. It's yes, that's yes, what I'm talking yes, about. yes, and yes. All of those are true. And yet, that's exactly the game that we used to play when we played Civilization. And so, for for me, I gotta tell you, I'm probably when it's when it's when it's available in uh, in, in the states for a reasonable price, I'm probably picking it up. It's interesting because I don't know, for for those of us who are younger from a different generation than you, I don't know. I feel like you know. I don't know. I I don't have uh, I don't have the same ties to the to that game from what was it nineteen seventy two or something like that. So I like <laughs> you know so so for me, but uh, for real though, like I don't have those ties to the game. So I I actually think that like you know I won't have that the underpinning of nostalgia that might power me through some of those game elements that otherwise would would drive me nuts. You know. Paul, I think you've been wanting to say something for a little bit. Would you like to say something? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, I think like this reminds me of uh, that one time you and I and a group of other people played Here I Stand. Oh, so good. Stop. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, like it's the investment of like 12 hours and or a day, really. And I, I feel that. I don't know. Like I, I would be totally up for it, but it would be the same vein of which I would play Forgotten Waters. So basically, Western uh, Empires and Forgotten Waters are exactly the same to me. Really? <laughs> oh God! Forgotten Waters! <laughs> wow! Wow! That's crazy. Look, I, I firmly realize that if I get Western Empires, it is a game that at most, at most, once a year, once a year, yeah. one day a year, and I understand that. The nine people I invite to play year one, I will probably only get four of them to play year two and have to find a new, a new group who is going to be able to, to gel with that. But I do kind of want that experience again. I do. And, and I would totally play it. Oh, I, I would, too. You know, it's a it, it's a birthday game. Hey, guys, here's my gift. Yeah. Uh, you're in debt to me like 15 <laughs> hours. We're going to order yeah. in. We're going to make a day of it. It has to be better than Forgotten Waters, at the very least. <laughs> we, we will get to that. We will get to that. Next up is a game called Santa Monica. 2020, Santa Monica coming out. We are here. Uh, I, I live Santa Monica adjacent. I live in the next, uh, the, the next town over. I walk every day on the beach in Santa Monica. And uh, uh, this, is kind of, this is kind of cool. It's a, a short, simple game. Uh, it's, I think it's about to come out or has just come out. I think it should be in, in, uh, available mm -hmm. uh, pretty much when you hear this. It plays two to four players. It plays in about 30 to 40 minutes. It's a little filler game. But if you look at it, you know, go take a look at it. It's, it's beachy. It's got pastels. It looks like Santa Monica a little bit. It looks like a little throwback Santa Monica. Super simple. It's sort of card drafting, and you're using those cards cards to build a little stretch of beachfront for yourself. And it's you know some you'll build a volleyball court, you know, or a sand volleyball area, and you're going to get guys later on, and you're going to put those guys into that volleyball area because it's going to be worth more points then. And you're going to have a little surf shop, and that surf shop gets points if it's next to something else that's uh, aquatics-related or that kind of thing, and so on and so forth. So, you know, listen, not much of a, a, of a game. It's, it's, it's kind of light, kind of simple, but it looks really good. They did good production design, good production values, and it seems like for a fairly simple game, it's... You know, think suburbia only uh, filler. Uh, I think that's kind of the yeah. closest to what it is. It looks. I love the art on it, and um, I love the idea of being able to go to Santa Monica without having to cross the four hundred five. So, you know, it's <laughs> you know, it's definitely on my radar. The four hundred five. How dare you? You're so far away. So far yeah. away. Um, next up, Imperial Struggle. Imperial Struggle. There was a uh, uh, photo shared on Twitter. Of all of the copies of Imperial Struggle ready to ship. For those who don't know, Imperial Struggle is the follow-up to Twilight Struggle. And it is 
about basically the Hundred Years' War, the Second Hundred Years' War that happened during the 18th century between France and Britain, where they were at each other's throats fighting everywhere you could possibly fight. The New World, the Old World, the continent, the, you know, the, India, basically every single place that these two massive empires were, they found ways to poke each other in the eye. So this is going to be a two-player game that is going to cover those years. So it's very much uh, Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle was a game that was set during a 40-year period of time in which the two great powers of the world fought in every corner of that world, and uh, the cards that you would play would would depict actual events that happened during that time. This is going to be the same thing. Um, I'm told that it should play very much like Twilight Struggle, if not even a little, maybe a little simpler, maybe a little more stripped down in some ways, a little less... There, there are some card combinations in Twilight Struggle that they may have decided to get rid of because they're a little, they're a little gamey, a little game the system sort of thing. Anyway, um, Jesse and Matt and I, I think we we all have uh, uh, copies ordered. Can't wait for them to come in. This is a game. If you like Twilight Struggle, how do you not immediately sign up for Imperial Struggle? If you are listening to me and you don't know what Twilight Struggle is, immediately go on Steam or whatever and play Twilight Struggle. It's one of the best games yeah. ever made. Yeah, it's also one of the most stressful experiences you'll ever have. And I have <laughs> I have such a strange relationship with Twilight Struggle in that um, I think it's it's great. It's such a good game. And yet I'm always sort of like, I have a copy of it, like right here, I'm staring at it. But uh, I'm always so intimidated to go dive into it. I do it like only every few years. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play Twilight Struggle. And I play it. And it's agonizing and fun and so good and then when it's over i'm like ah, ah. i have to like put it back on the shelf and be like i have to work work out my energy to play it again because it just is like man i feel like i'm getting it's just it's intense it's intense so would you say it's mean or cutthroat <laughs> cutthroat i would say it's cutthroat oh, or haven't... or actually if it is mean the meanness is thematically appropriate because it is a cold war so it's Absolutely. passive aggressive how about that yeah uh, I have a, I'm in your same situation, Ben. I have a sealed copy of Twilight Struggle, like, you know, right underneath my, my TV. And every time I, you know, I go, I look at it, I go, not today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or my app. I've got the app too. I'm like, I'll, I'll play, I'll start playing and it'll be like, do you, it's like JFK or Vietnam War or whatever. And I'll be like, sure. Yeah, this will be fun. And I'll be like, ah, and I just sort of like throw my phone across the, across the room. I'm like, it's too much. Game brainers, do not listen to these people. They they know not it's what they're doing. It is a great amazing. Game. Paul, you should play it with Aiden. Should I? Should I? <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> no, it, you the know what? Was... There's there's an intimidation factor because not uh, not only is it an incredibly stressful game, and in a way, by the way, that is not a negative. That is a total pot. It's like fun stress. That's the best part. It's like it's so tense, you know, um, which is not a problem for me. All the games we play are mostly very tense. But um, there is this feeling like, especially in Twilight Struggle, that people who've played it a lot, who really know the decks, et cetera, are just going to rake you over the coals. So you have the tension of um, the tension of the game itself and the tension of feeling like you're a little lamb who has like walked into the lion's den and, and, like, and think to yourself, can I survive this? So I think that's, that's what it is for me. But maybe as I get better and better, yeah. I will feel that i'll be less intimidated absolutely like you know that they, the game requires investment basically to, to really play it to play it at a not even at a beginning level but at a at a understandable level you need to know all the cards you need to know you get to play it like like five times before you go oh now i can start playing it and i it's just one of those things that the people that i play with you know are already like so far down the road you know who, who elder has said this about you know various games like sometimes you just late for the curve yeah and then you yep. just you don't want to play it and then so like you know like tom and jesse and even aiden like you know there's just so much investment in it already for them and for me i'm like going oh there's this card that like wipes out my whole board well <laughs> i wish i knew that look paul just put influence in romania <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's and it's also by the way because you are basically it's like little fires everywhere i mean there's it's just like in an you are battling on so many fronts at all times and then and they're just growing and growing. So it's just, it's, it is amazing. It is an amazing design, an amazing game. 
And, um, you know, just I'm not saying don't play it because it's intimidating. I'm saying my experience is that I have this thing where I want to play it. And then I like sort of engineer it and then scurry away to a corner and find some ice cream. Well, gentlemen, I got good news for you because a game that is almost exactly like Twilight, Twilight Struggle and yet that none of us have ever played is about to come out. Imperial Struggle wow. is coming. You do not have to be behind the curve anymore. You can be learning it with us. We can all be learning it together. Gentlemen, this is our opportunity. Let's seize it. <laughs> to hit reset. Next okay. up, um, uh, Paul, you were, you were mentioning a game that we played for 12, 12 hours when we were talking about uh, Western. What, what was that game? Here I Stand. Here I Stand. It's funny that you mentioned that because the designer of that is a guy named Ed Beach. Ed Beach has done design work on all sorts of things, including Civilization VI, the PC game, and all that sort of stuff. He also designed Here I Stand, Virgin Queen, and he's got a brand new game that's coming out. It's called Border Reavers. It is about the Anglo-Scottish border raids of the 1500s, and oh my goodness, it's supposed to be like Here I Stand, and <laughs> <laughs> look... I love Here I Stand. I adore Here I Stand. Question, Tom. Yes. How many times have you played it? Twice. How many times have you finished it? <laughs> One. <laughs> Once. Once. Am I the only one who imagines every time you say Here I Stand, it's Kate Blanchett saying it? Because I feel like it really matches. I think it does. I think you're right. It is. I actually think of Gandalf. And I, when you say Here I Stand, I think of like, you shall not pass. You shall not pass. Which, by the way, is, is... I just imagine, like, an Oscar clip of Kate Blanchett just, like, dressed in some period garb saying, Here I stand. So, Here Great. I Stand is a game about the wars of the Protestant Reformation. So, Martin Luther nails his 95 theses to the, uh, to the door at the Wittenberg uh, uh, Cathedral and starts off a firestorm. And you play in that game either the Ottoman Empire... The Catholics, the Holy Roman Empire, France, England, the Protestants, or there's one more I can't remember. Did the, you said the English already? E France. Yes, I think I did. Anyway, seven different powers. And here's the thing. They all play so differently. If you're the reformers... You barely have any troops on the board. A lot of the Ottomans are using raiding parties and and piracy and ships, and they're they're attacking people. As a reformer, you are translating the Bible into different languages and and trying to get it into England and all this sort of stuff. So there's it's a six seven player game that has many 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 different mini games to the extent that some people are playing radically different games than the person sitting next to them and it's 12 hours long that was a problem and that is also the beauty of it it's it, i absolutely love it i i kind of have i guess today is the day for me to confess my love for borderline unplayable games <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm with you. I love, I actually love like an eight or 10 or 12 hour game because I feel like it's so epic and it's like an experience. So I'm with you there. Yeah. Well, like our Forbidden Stars night that one night. Yeah. Like Forbidden <laughs> Stars that went for, that was like 12 hours. <laughs> well, Border Reavers is going to be six players, uh, each playing one of the six major riding families on the border. Essentially, there is this one area of Scotland that you couldn't grow anything. Because it's Scotland, you can't grow anything. So everybody had to get by with livestock, right? They had to get by with meat, cheese, cut them up for food and all that sort of stuff. But invariably, they couldn't survive on just what they had. So they'd have to go and raid the next door neighbors that had uh, the stuff that they wanted to. And sometimes there would be two or three families ganging up together on the one rich family and to take everything that they had and so on and so forth. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um... This is a game set in that period, which says to me, here I stand, but everyone is playing the same game. So mm. card-driven, sort of like a six-player Twilight Struggle, maybe, right? It's a card-driven oh. war game where six different factions okay. are fighting over very scarce resources, trying to survive and trying to, to uh, surpass each other. I, it's I like going to the supermarket these days, yes. I'm all over it. I am all over over that i can't wait uh super excited uh that's a gmt game release it'll be coming out very very soon uh one more gmt release every once in a while i think 
you know, every three months or so on the podcast, we go over some GMT games. There's a game called Versailles 1919. It's uh, about the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, this is a game by Jeff Engelstein and Mark Herman. They did a game called Churchill that I maintain is amazing. Churchill is a three-player only game that is it's kind of like Twilight Struggle in the sense that it straddles the line between war game for war gamers and euro game for euro gamers. There is no dudes on a map on this. There's none of that sort of stuff. What it is is it, it, it Churchill is sort of the uh, the negotiations at Yalta, I believe. And you are trying to outwit, outmaneuver, and put yourself in, in the position to win the treaty, essentially. Versailles, it plays up to four players, and it plays short. It plays in about two hours, and it's going to be um, basically the negotiations in the conference room trying to get your issues uh, um, uh, met so that the fate of the world is going to turn out in, in your benefit. And if you don't know, the Treaty of Versailles at the end of 1919 is, is one of the more controversial uh, pieces of 20th century history that we have. I mean, so many things happen that, that are, we're still dealing with today go back to that. The French, for instance, would not listen to Woodrow Wilson or, or any of the other world leaders and give Germany uh, some amount of uh, face-saving in that treaty. And because of that, plunged them into the Weimar Republic and hyperinflation and brought out such resentment that not too long thereafter, the Nazi regime rose and we were in the Second World War, directly because of the Versailles uh, Treaty in 1919. Um, the Middle East was carved up during this period. The Asia was carved up to some degree. The, uh, you know... Um, Vietnam. So we can fix it all on this board game. We can. <laughs> Look. Is that what you're saying? The English in World War I partnered in the Middle East because they found out that oil was going to be important, right? They'd been using coal up to this point, and they, they found out that oil had advantages. I saw Lawrence Arabia. <laughs> they partnered with two families. They, they partnered with the, the Hussein family and the Saud family. And sure enough, in the Treaty of Versailles, those two families divvied up Everything, everything. Wow. Uh, very, very, very interesting period of time. And if it plays, if it's Churchill that plays for four players in two hours, I cannot wait to get this. I can't wait to get it to the table. I can't wait to show it to you guys. Uh, Mark Herman is is a very, very good uh, war game designer that designs euro adjacent war games. Uh, he did some games in the coin system and and, and things like that. And uh, I, I highly recommend checking him out. Um, cool. Yeah, and let's move on. One last thing, The Shining. Uh, would you believe wow. that in 2020, with all the crazy stuff that's happening here, we got murder hornets, we got all sorts of stuff going on, two different Shining games are coming out, right? We had one that already came what? out, Prospero Hall's mm -hmm. uh, Shining game already came out. Um, later on this year, a different game based on The Shining is coming out, The Shining Escape from Overlook Hotel. This is a game that is set in the Coded Chronicles world. Coded Chronicles is kind of like a um, escape room in a box. I guess you could describe what it is. Is there there are code there are codes and hidden things that are hidden in the pictures of the cards and the pieces of the of the game. And as you uncover clues, those clues are going to help you discover the answer to the puzzles in the game, which are then going to lead to more clues and so on and so forth. Um, there's only been one Coded Chronicles game before this. It was the uh, Scooby-Doo one that came out. It was called Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion, which got pretty good reviews, actually. People were talking about it and saying that it's, it's a, kind of a refreshing change. It's a little bit different. Now, how much play is this game going to have? Will you solve the problems and then you never play the game again? I don't quite know that. I haven't played the original, so I can't say. But it's interesting anyway. That's, that, a qu that's quite a progression to go from Scooby-Doo to The Shining. It is, isn't it? Is it, though? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, Scooby-Doo well, is just basically I, The Shining with, like, nicer music. Hashtag not my Scooby-Doo. That's true. <laughs> not, you, know, you know what, though? This, I like that there are these two Shining games because it, it, it also it follows real life, how there was the famous Shining movie, and then there was the ABC miniseries with Stephen Weber. You mean the, uh, the, the, Steve, the, the Stephen King-approved version of The Shining? 
Yes, the TV exactly. Movie. Yes. Stephen King notoriously uh, very, very angry about Stanley Kubrick's uh, 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 liberal take on his book, um, despite it being the greatest horror movie ever made. What yeah. can you do? What can you do? Um, that, ladies and gentlemen, was the news. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.